Hey, survivors. Have a seat, friends. Yeah, come closer to the fire. And there's still some time. Let me tell you about life in the wasteland. The year 2052 flashed by. Oh, we've been through so many things. At the beginning of the year, the founders arrived in the valley. Yeah, those guys with the construction equipment. We hadn't taken them seriously at first, and that was a big mistake. They brought the Omnibox cabin that is very useful in battles, the Summator nail gun, and the laser drill trigger, especially beloved by survivors. As we say, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> Back in those days, Knives Out Brawl first appeared in the game. Oh, and the amount of stress we spent, it's unbelievable. And do you remember the moment when the Cerberus cabin appeared? I think we should build a monument to its creator, urgently. At the end of winter, some scouts discovered a new location, the Ashen Ring. People say there's a scientific complex there where somebody used to accelerate particles and conduct experiments. In brief, it's become much more dangerous there now. Survivors show up there every now and then, and the high-caliber brawl was also introduced into the game. There's no question, the caliber was massive indeed. In spring, we all breathed freely because we received an opportunity to play PvP battles in groups of two survivors. And we also saw new developments from Firestarters and Lunatics. These fiery guys have finally updated their combat arsenal. The Shotgun Mace, Cabin Harpy, and Flamethrower Draco. The Wasteland has become a completely different place, and especially skilled survivors managed to get the Griffin Cabin, a real find for enthusiasts of beautiful equipment. In April, everyone could try out the new Camp City 16. On this construction site inside the old city, the founders placed their hidden base, but they were soon found by scavengers. It was a good scuffle, that's for sure. By the way, it was also the time when the system of dynamic scopes was added into the game, and it turned out pretty well. Closer to the summer, the craftsmen of the valley, and partly the ravengers, developed a pulse rifle called Adapter. Together with it, we got a chance to try out the heavy cabin demon plasma emitter, Theseus, and the Beholder cabin. By the way, I hate invisible cars. The most interesting events for me, as for a trader, started with the arrival of the summer. That's because I got a license to trade on the market. You assemble an old piece of iron, patch some modules, connect some wires, some scrap metal, plus some plastic, and here you are. Then you sell this beauty on the market, get your money, and enjoy your life. At this rate, I'll save up for a more powerful gun very soon. I remember a lot of survivors saying that the parameters of their cabins received some massive changes. Oh, the rumors. In June, we found deposits of wires and batteries in one of the mountainous regions. We called this place a substation, a great location, and it's a real pleasure to defend it against the attacks of the raiders. The engineers were also active in the summer they developed the Waltz rocket launcher, a module called Doppler, and even brought new wheels. Fortune, or something like that, must have slipped my mind. And the Raven showed up, of course. Tough guys, you need to be careful around them. I traded the laser shotgun called Gravistar, a minigun called Reaper, and the barrel launcher Porcupine from them once. I barely got away. <laughs> In August, the scouts discovered three mines. We called them the Towers of Dawn. I must say it's dangerous to be there. Many fell into huge pits. We never heard from them again. What next? Oh, sure. In the autumn, things got into full steam. Someone developed a blueprint of the Cheetah Passive Module, and a machine gun called IMP, and a buggy wheel appeared in the wasteland. And most importantly, we were finally able to finish assembling the cockpit cabin. I saw it with my own eyes. And finally, October. It wasn't that long ago. Brr. I remember Halloween with terror, pumpkin madness, when a rocket turned into a pumpkin. And we also found an abandoned aircraft carrier, explored it for a long time, and found a lot of interesting things. In November, we got into history. We dug up a tank track blueprint somewhere and named it Goliath. Along with it, the survivors liked the jumbo cannon and the Corvo revolver. Old toys, but nonetheless, very effective ones. In December, we received another important innovation, a new type of movement part, mechanical legs, 
a long-standing development that finally appeared in the Valley. By the way, along with this, it has become possible to play PvP battles in a group of three people. And the most recent events came like thunder from the skies. The radio has finally started working in the wasteland. Just kidding. The long-awaited voice chat and the custom battle mode have become available in Crossout. We managed to set up communication between armored cars in the middle of the battle and train our skills away from danger. Engineers have brought new types of weapons and modules. The survivors have yet to figure out how to control these curiosities. So, all in all, it was a great year. Let's celebrate the anniversary of the international release of Crossout Mobile by playing our favorite game. But it's not the end. There will definitely be more to tell. We'll come back to you with updates. Until then, see you around, friends.